Hey guys, it's Brandon Gustafson. Welcome back to Assisted Living Investing. Happy to have you on the channel today. Uh, just a quick reminder uh, to get on assistedlivinginvesting.net. I'd love to see you over on the website for some free resources and to subscribe to my newsletter for future content. Also, make sure you uh, like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Uh, make sure you comment down below. Uh, make sure people can see those comments so we can continue, continue having a, a conversation here as, as a group and people can continue to learn and, and things. And make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit the, the bell so you can get notified of future content and, and so that it helps other people find the channel and uh, people can learn um, from this process. Uh, I would also love to have you follow me on all my other social media platforms. Would love to see you over there and uh, just continue the conversation. So in our last video, we talked about why do you need a legal structure for your assisted living facility? Um, why it's important to do that and give you a few resources there. Uh, again, I'm going to put the disclaimer out there that I'm not an attorney. Um, any advice that I provide to you should not be considered professional advice and you should engage a professional for your specific situation. But I also wanted to get into how I structured my assisted living business uh, with you today uh, just so I can share with you how I got things started um, and, and how, you know, give you an example of what it might look like for you, especially because I, I, I live in Utah and I have facilities in Colorado and in Idaho. Uh, so we're a little bit different. We're structured a little bit different, but something that I want to make sure that you understand, um, something I pointed out a couple videos ago is the best place for you to set up your entity is the place where you are doing business at. So keep that in mind as I get into, into setting, as I get into the structure of our entities and how we have things set up. Um, and so without further ado, we'll jump into that um, here with the screen share. Okay, so I'm going to get into our operational entities and how things are structured for the entities that actually run our business, actually run the assisted living facilities um, and what those look like. Um, so each of my operating businesses is set up as an LLC, um, which is then owned by a holding company, which is then owned by um, each of my father and I. Um, and we, so we're the business partners for each of those entities. Uh, the business entity is registered and operates only in the state uh, where we are operating our respective facilities. And this operating entity is the entity that runs the business and nearly all of the income of our assisted living facility, all those income and expenses, they flow through this entity um, and they go back eventually up to us. Now the entity, this entity is the entity that leases the, the building from our entity. This entity right here leases the, the building um, for our entity that owns the real estate. Um, so it's kind of structured that way. So you can kind of see here, this is our Colorado um, facility. This is our Idaho facility. And those are actually owned by a holding company here. And this one is set up in Colorado. Um, it's registered in Colorado. That's where it operates. This one is set up in Idaho. It operates in Idaho. Um, this is a holding company in a different state. And then my dad and I each own 50% of this holding company, uh, which then wholly owns um, each of these other entities here. So this was a relatively complex structure that we went through the conversation with our, our attorneys to to get in place and to make sure that we have that structure the way that we want it to be. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how we have things set up for our operational entities. Love to have questions down below. If you have questions or comments about the way that you have structured your entities, uh, maybe you're you're a sole proprietor, maybe you're just an individual that has done this. Um, you know, in that case, you probably would, and you're only operating in one state, then you probably just need this one entity right here because we're operating in multiple states. That's why we have um, such a complex structure. This is not required at all um, for you to get started. Um, having something as simple as an entity that that owns the, the business and operates the business in your one specific state, that's going to be sufficient. So, Again, this is where having a conversation with a professional is going to help you learn how you need to get things structured in your specific situation. Now I'm going to jump over to the real estate side and it's going to look extremely similar um, where um, this is just the real estate companies. Um, so we determined through our conversations that the real estate that we own is 
worth enough money that it, it's beneficial to us to have that separated out and have it be a part of its, you know, held in its own separate entity. Um, so our, we have, again, our, our holding real estate company that is owned um, 50% by my father and I, and then we have a, an entity in Colorado that owns that real estate. And we have a entity in Idaho. Again, each of these are just registered and operate in in their respective states. And then this is in a, a separate state um, just as a holding company. And then we have our individual um, our individuals um, up there. So the entity, these entities own the real estate and they accept the payments from the operating facilities, the ones that we just looked at, so that you can so that it then pays the debt service to the SBA loan. So in our case, this entity, these real estate entities are who did the SBA loan. That's who owns the real estate. That who, that's who has the debt service um, with SBA. That's who's on title um, for the loans there. Um, and that's how it's structured. And then the, the operational entity has a lease agreement that is set up and it pays um, the real estate entity so that the real estate entity can then pay um, the debt service. Um, if As you get bigger, as you grow your portfolio, you get something larger, it might benefit, there might be some other tax advantages you can do. We're small enough that there's really nothing, like there's no admin advantage for us to pay a little bit of extra money um, as like a property manager into the real estate entity to then have a flow to us. We just don't make enough money on it for it to make sense. But as you continue to grow, that might be a strategy that you would want to implement. And again, that's where you would have a conversation with your CPA um, to see, is this somewhere where I could take advantage of, of um, some tax, uh, tax laws um, and, and make it so that I can um, keep more of my money as I'm operating my entity. Um, again, there's very limited financial activity that actually happens in this entity. It's, it's just there to hold the real estate. That's really its only purpose. Um, and then to protect us, you know, in the event that something happens, it, it just adds that extra layer of protection, which is the purpose that we um, decided that's why we wanted to have um, this entity structure this way. Now, as I mentioned, um, we're operating in multiple states. That's why it's so complex. You know, that's why we have this entity in Colorado, this one in Idaho. We have a holding company. And then we have our individual, uh, ourselves, our individual entities that kind of own our our um, portions of those businesses. Um, because we're operating in multiple states, we wanted to have things roll up this way um, and have separate entities that hold um things in each of the states, um, operating and the real estate. We wanted to just keep things separate, keep it clean. Um, it just, you know, adds extra protection to us. It is not necessary that you do something like this. You know, if you're operating in the state where you currently live, you don't need to have this weird um, kind of structure here um, that looks like an insect. You don't need to have anything crazy like that. You can just have the one entity right here, especially, you know, you're just owned by you. You could just have something very, very simple. You don't need to get complex here at all. Um, but it's something that you would want to have a conversation with your attorney, with your CPA. How does it make sense um, as far as tax purposes? How does it make sense in terms of protection, legal protection for you, uh, for your family? Um, have a conversation with somebody to figure out what is best for your specific situation. Um, that, you know, again, that's going to be my my big um, push here is to just tell you, have a conversation. It's worth the money. Make sure you have it there. Um, this structure provides us with some additional asset protection and anonymity, um, which is great for us. Your situation might be different. It, I mean, it, it likely is different. So make sure you have a conversation um, to figure out what is going to work for you. All right, so I hope that tutorial, that kind of example was helpful to you. I'd love to see your comments down below. Uh, make sure you reach down and, and, and let me know, you know, your thoughts on, on the structure. I'd, I'd love to hear about it, your, your specific circumstance, how you kind of structured your entity. Uh, just a quick recap on, on the video today. Um, this was how we started our assisted living business. We went over the business entities, the real estate entities, and how we operate in multiple states and how we have addressed that with the, the structure of our entities. Now, next time I'm going to start getting into how to register your business with the state and county and, and city and why it's important, again, for this legal structure to exist so that you can 
um, then properly register your businesses um, with the appropriate state, county, city, um, municipalities, and, and how you can get things in place there. I uh, would love to have you again. Just make sure you like the video. Give me a big thumbs up. Um, comment down below. Let, let me know how... Uh, how you have your entity structure, how your, your conversations are going with your attorney, with your CPA. Make sure you subscribe um, to the channel uh, and, and ring that bell so that you get notified every time we put new content out here. Um, doing all those things really helps people find the channel, uh, really helps us grow and and you know help people on their journey to to find and, and get into a, a investing in assisted living. Uh, make sure you follow me on all my social media platforms and, and visit me on assistedlivinginvesting.net. We'd love to see you over there for the free resources and also to join my mailing list for future content. Uh, and just make sure you remember that it doesn't take a lot. Just get started. A little bit is okay. You can do this. Just get started. We'll see you next time.